All right, so good morning. Good morning and welcome back to JPC Special Talk. It's Chair Campbell. So this morning is devotional. God is faithful. A small reading from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24. We'll start us out. I also have some a little bit of a fun fact about 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, starting in verse verses 23 through 27. But we'll talk about this after the reading of the devotional. But before we get into all this, we'll start out by asking the Lord in a quick prayer. And the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We're going to ask the Lord to shine our hearts, so let me master the pure light of my knowledge. And open up the eyes of our minds that we may understand your teachings in Scripture. Help us apply what we learn after having conquered some of the desires. We may pursue the spiritual way of life, thinking and doing all the things that are pleasing to you. You Christ are God, you are life, to you your glory. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever, as sages. Amen. For it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word sees in the mouth of God again again my mother and brothers and sisters of those who hear the word of God and do it the Lord is our shepherd All right good morning welcome back so grace is faithfulness indeed the spirit is willing the flesh is we keep asking keep seeking keep knocking Christ is in our midst and ever shall be in the Father Son and the Holy Spirit All right, this morning so God is faithful and a small reading from First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24, kick us off. So thank you all again for following. Jump right into it this morning. After the reading of the devotional, I'll have a little, a little, a little bit of a fun fact to share. Came up as part of the study when I was preparing for the devotional. So God is faithful in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. He who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24. God never calls us to do anything without faithfully keeping his word and enabling us to do it. We're not always faithful to do what God tells us, but he remains faithful and stands by his word to fulfill what he has promised. Isaiah chapter 46, verse 11. When the children of Israel reached the Red Sea, they may have concluded that God had abandoned his promise to them. The sea was bearing their advance and the murderous Egyptian army was racing to overtake them. Yet God proved then, as he has ever since, that he is absolutely faithful to every word he speaks to his children. God may have spoken to you about something in particular, a ministry in your church, the way to raise your children, or what you should do in your job. You have obeyed him. But now you face a Red Sea experience, and it seems that what you thought God wanted to accomplish is not happening. Perhaps your ministry has not been well received, or, you, or your children are rebellion, or those at your workplace are criticizing your actions. Trust in the character of God. It is, his it is his nature to be faithful. The testimony of his people throughout the ages is expressed by the psalmist, who declared, I have been young and now I'm old, but yet I have not seen the righteous abandoned or his children begging bread psalm 37 verse 25 regardless of how you regardless of how bleak your present circumstances are do not lose hope no one has ever experienced unfaithfulness on god's part allow time for god to reveal his faithfulness to you someday you will reflect on what god has done and praise him for his absolute faithfulness to you in the father son and the holy spirit another beautiful reading that beautiful reflection it is true god's always faithful He's always faithful to us. So 1 Thessalonians. So 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, starting in verse 23 through 27. So we're going to read this. I decided to throw this in this morning. Kind of a fun fact a little bit, right? To kind of learn scripture and kind of learn what, what Paul was saying. Right? So we're going to start at verse 23, right? We're just going to break this down. We're going to get out of here this morning, but it's a little bit of a fun fact, right? So starting in verse 23, right? It says, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you faithful, who also, who also do it. Brethren, pray for us. Greet all brethren with a holy kiss. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read to all the holy brethren. 
in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So let's, so let's break this down. So we see some liturgy, like overtones, right? With regard to what the corporate meeting, right? Of worship. So we see one, we see the benediction. Look at verse 23. So we see the benediction. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be, be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Two, we see intercessory prayer. Look at verse 25. Brethren, pray for us. Three, the kiss of peace. That was in verse 26. Greet all brethren with a holy kiss. And four. So we see the kiss of peace. And then four, the public reading of scriptures. That was in verse 27. I charge you by the Lord as the epistle be read to all holy brethren. So the practice of the holy kiss. So the practice of a holy kiss in verse 26 very early became part of the worship liturgy. And just prior to communion, the faithful would exchange the kiss of peace on one cheek and then the other to show the reconciliation in Christ thus Christ is in our midst and ever shall be. And then we see in verse 27, the Bible is, is to be read out loud during corporate worship. So the kiss of peace. Let's look at Romans chapter 16, verse 16. It says, greet one another with a holy kiss. The churches of Christ greet you. The first Corinthians chapter 16, verse 20 says, and all the brethren greet you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 12 says, greet one another with a holy kiss. First Peter chapter 5, verse 14. Greet one another with a kiss of love. Peace to all who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So there's a little bit of a fun fact about 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 23 through 27. I wanted to share that with all of you this morning. I'm going to close out in prayer now. But God is always faithful. Thank you all again. Very, very quick reading. Thank you all again for following. So this evening, we'll talk about that after prayer. All right, so we'll close that in prayer, and then I'll talk about this evening. May the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, Lord God, you've spoken us your devising words. You illuminate the souls of sinners to comprehend what we just read, that we don't appear simply as hear spiritual words, but doers of good deeds, true pursuers of faith. Having to blame his life and conduct without reproaching Christ our Lord. You are light, you and your glory. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, both now and forever in the ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses. They forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever in the ages. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be merciful to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever. The sages. Amen. <sighs> Lord is our shepherd. Our, we depart in peace. In the name of the Lord, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Peace be with you all. Go in peace. Shalom. Shalom. May the Lord forgive those who love us and those who hate us. So this evening, hopefully, we'll start back in Acts. We'll start Acts chapter 3 this evening. We won't be home until after four o'clock. So may or may not get to Acts three. We'll see. I really want to, but we'll see what happens. Like I said, well, it'll be a little bit after four o'clock when we're home, but we might be able to pull off Acts three. If if I do this evening, it'll be late, but we'll see. Right? We're definitely gonna get back on track. I've been tired the last few days, but we'll play on Acts three. If not, I apologize. But We'll see a lot of busy days ahead. So love you all so much. Thank you for the love and support. Hope you enjoyed this morning's devotional and reading. All right. I'm going to start trying to throw in some more fun facts with our studies. So everybody can learn a little more about the Bible. I kind of enjoy doing that. So I love you all so much. So JPC spiritual talk, never ever hold back. I right? seek his truth. I right? seek him. Jerry Wesley Campbell. Good morning. Good day. Whenever and however these messages find you all. I love you all so much. I'm out.